I mentioned before that when I joined Intel, it was populated by a, a lot of physicists and chemists and engineers in general. And they were great technologists and they invented all sort of new circuits, uh, new devices. Uh, but uh, frankly, we in the initial stages of the company were not very good at manufacturing devices. We were great technologists and we would bring new circuits into the marketplace. And we'd make a few of them and we'd make some money on the first few that we sold and then other people would come along and manufacture them and give us stiff competition. And the only way we were able to survive <coughs> is continue to go to the next generation of devices, the next generation of technology. And the Japanese-based companies were especially uh, competitive in this respect. They had really learned how to manufacture in volume and were very cost-effective and high quality in their manufacturing capability. In fact, in, you're now 20, 25 years ago in the mid-1980s, you're at a time frame when the Japanese-based companies, NEC, Toshiba, uh, Fujitsu, and others were really, um, if I can use an indelicate phrase, kicking butt uh, really taking it to the American manufacturers. And companies like Intel were in serious trouble at that time. In fact, I can remember very specifically a time frame when the many noted academics, I don't think any here at Stanford, but certainly a lot at Harvard uh, and on the East Coast, were telling us at Intel that you guys are crazy to be in the manufacturing business. You ought to just design circuits and leave the manufacturing to someone else because you will never compete with the Japanese-based companies. And that was in about 1984, 85 that this pronouncement was made. It also is when companies like Intel were starting to lose money because we could not uh, adequately manufacture devices. So our company was faced at a serious decision at that point in time is what do we do with our future? Do we follow this uh, academic advice and get out of the manufacturing business and just become a, a designer of circuits, or do we, in fact, uh, try to become a manufacturer? We actually chose the latter approach. And I can remember leading uh, airplane load after airplane load of our executives and our people to Japan, ch touring Japanese factories, uh, talking to them about manufacturing technology, uh, seeing what they did on their manufacturing floor. And after about two years of that, we went into a huddle and we concluded that they weren't doing anything very sophisticated or anything very secret. Uh, they were just applying good engineering principles and engineering discipline, statistical principles and statistical control discipline. And uh, they had set a series of high expectations on what manufacturing lines could produce. So we came back to the U.S. and committed ourselves to that, trained the entire company on statistical process control, design of complex experiments, all those sort of uh, things that are good engineering discipline but were lacking on the manufacturing floor. And by 1988, 89, 1990, we had improved the situation quite dramatically. And probably one of the, the uh, most uh, the proudest moments of my professional career was when, after having visited Japan about 20 times to learn how to manufacture in the mid-1980s, we had a constant flux of Japanese executives to Intel headquarters to see how we were manufacturing in 1990. We had completely kind of turned the tables. And so that, that's when really the company became, I think, noted as a manufacturing uh, uh, powerhouse of sorts but it was really the application of engineering discipline and engineering principles to the manufacturing floor. And it was not the sort of thing that the scientists and engineers automatically bring with them out of school to a manufacturing floor. But we'll, we'll get a little bit to that later on. Uh, one of the, uh, the topics that uh, um, we became known for in that time was something called copy exactly, which was a, the fact that we had half a dozen big manufacturing facilities, and each one of them had a plant manager, and each one of them was really king of their domain, or queen of their domain, looking at the audience. Uh, and they had absolute rule over what went on in their manufacturing plant. It was a little bit like a, a, a department head here in the School of Engineering. I presume that you have absolute rule over what goes on in your department. <laughs> of course, at least you think you do. Uh, but. 
The, the problem we had was we'd have these six manufacturing plants nominally running the same technology with different sets of equipment, different processes, different recipes. And if you ever tried to move a product from one plant to another, uh, it was next to impossible. And these people, none of the, the plant managers were willing to give up their autonomy or their, their control. So I, I can remember a meeting that we had one day where we had, uh, uh, there were uh, 21 uh, senior manufacturing executives at Intel. I was running manufacturing at the time and I called a meeting and, and I was projected that we would change the way we would do business in the future rather than having independent factories. We would have very closely linked factories. Every factory would look the same, would run the same recipe, have the same equipment. And I was basically telling the managers who were there that I was taking a lot of their authority away from them. And one of them uh, raised his hand and, and basically said, you know, this is a different style of management you're suggesting, Craig. Uh, do we get to vote on it? <laughs> and having counted the number of participants in the meeting, 21 as they walked in the room, I said, yes, we're going to vote, but I have 22 votes. And that's how this, uh, this, this concept, which uh, has given some notoriety, called Copy Exactly, which is every one of our factories today looks the same, has the same paint, the same tile, the same air conditioning, the same equipment, the same recipe, and they all operate absolutely identical. It drives a lot of uh, our people nuts because they, they think that you should be allowed to twist knobs to optimize at the local level as opposed to running a common recipe across the board. But we kind of do it the McDonald's way. You know, if you go to any McDonald's around the world, the French fries all taste the same. If you come to any Intel facility, our products <laughs> behave the same and are manufactured the same. We can easily transmit them from one, one uh, area to the other.